What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. Today we're looking at a wild card for game week 26. I thought if I leave it any later in the week, I'll just get a comment after comment on all the videos that I put out. So I thought I'd just do it now. I'm going to talk about key players, things to think about, a draft, and then we'll do some tinkering as well because obviously the draft that I show could be changed to different options. And there's other players that I'm going to talk about why we're doing the tinkering. So if you enjoy it, please do give it a like, hit subscribe if you're new around here, and also make sure to check out the first watch along that I'm doing on this channel tonight, which is Leeds versus Southampton. Obviously, a lot riding on it. It's the end of Double Game Week 25, but also a lot of people with Leeds captains, Ings, Rafinha, Bamford, etc. Um, so looking forward to that. So make sure you check it out. I'm going to start about 5.50 tonight. Obviously, kick off at 6, all the way through until 8 o'clock. There's already a link up uh, on the channel if you want to set a reminder. Otherwise, let's get into the wildcard video. So obviously, if you're wildcarding this week, the main thing to think about is what other chips do you have left, right? Uh, and I'm not going to go through a different draft for every single different chip combination because some people will have their free hit, some won't, some will still be thinking about bench boost, some will be holding triple captain, etc. Um, so there's all things that you're going to have to think about. So for bench boost in particular, because you can't use wildcard plus another chip in the same week, you're going to have to look at which week going forward looks the best so you can use something like the transfer planner on livefpl.net put in your game week 26 wildcard team into that and then look in the future which week looks the best for a bench basically uh, maybe it's game week 27 28 whatever it might be uh, you can have a look at that obviously preferably or the pre the preferable kind of strategy would have been to already use it and wildcard out of it but it's too late at this point if you haven't already done that and also if you've got your free hit or not that's obviously quite a big thing because you got two options, right? If you don't have it, then you pretty much have to think about the balance of double game week 26 and game week 29 when you're making your squad. Bearing in mind, you'll still have three transfers, right? So game week 27, 28, and 29, you'll still have three transfers to make moves um, if you want to. And if you have your free hit, then you've definitely got even more options because you could almost ignore game week 29 if you wanted to, and just use your free hit in there. Maybe if there's a bunch of players like Spurs, Villa, Leeds, you're not really too sure um, on having in your wildcard team, you could leave them out and then free hit in 29, then be fine for the rest of the season. Or if you're happy with those team, uh, players from the teams I've just mentioned, then you'll also be able to get through game week 29. If you've still got your free hit, you could use it in another smaller double game week if you wanted to. You could use it in game week 33 when Man City and Spurs both blank. You could just have a uh, final hurrah on the last day of the season and just free hit. Hope that some managers will give us in indications of who's going to start because sometimes when teams haven't got stuff to play for, um, you know their season's over, they're not going to get relegated, they're not going to win the league, whatever it might be they start telling us about kind of fringe players that are going to start and stuff like that and you can have a bit of a punt so there's lots of ways to play your free hit but you need to be thinking about all these things when you're putting your wild card together uh, otherwise i'm going to talk about some key players and then we'll have a look at the actual draft that i've come up with which is not really thinking about a bench boost but it does kind of cover game week 26 and 29 so i think there's a few kind of key players and some of these are quite obvious but we're going to talk about them anyway briefly so i think triple city is an absolute must still right I don't, it doesn't matter which way around you go for it double defense double attack you go De Bruyne and Sterling Sterling and Gundogan Gundogan and De Bruyne Cancelo and Stone Stones and DS etc it doesn't matter which way around you do it I think triple city is almost essential I will say right I don't like using the e-word but they have a pretty good double game week this week and they double in 27 as well uh, one of the fixtures in 27 is Man United but this is Man City we're talking about right especially from a defensive point of view Man United are going to find it hard to break them down even though in the past they've done okay against them like last season um but this is man city they're in such good form right now i feel like they could beat anyone so triple city non-negotiable for me then harry kane and son i just think the fixtures are good enough to warrant the double up and like i said the draft that i've put together is thinking about double ga uh, sorry blank game week 29 as well um so i think kane and son would probably be in for me but when we do the tinkering part i will talk about other players that could go in instead calvert lewin i've spoken about already this week there's potential and it is just potential for Everton to have a double game week in game week 28 as well, which would be Burnley, I think, and Aston Villa. Um, 
And this week, kind of Everton have the best fixtures. So Southampton at home, West Brom away is about as good as it gets. So Calvert-Lewin would definitely be in my squad, I think, as a key player. You could go for another Everton player, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but I think he is the one that I would definitely want. I think his ownership is going to be quite high this uh, week. Uh, and I'm a bit jealous because I probably won't be able to own him in my own team. And then we've got Bruno Fernandes and Mo Salah. Now, you could be brave and go without one of these because they do both play Chelsea in the double game week, um, which isn't a great fixture. I could see both blanking in that. But they are very highly owned, especially Bruno Fernandes. Um, I don't like to think too much about ownership, but it is a massive risk going without him, especially one when the other fixture is Crystal Palace, right? And they're a poor team. I don't care that they beat Brighton last night. I'd say they got pretty fortunate. I think they had two shots on target, scored two goals. Brighton, again, really high expected goals from Brighton, just didn't put it in the back of the net again. Another team will do that, like Man United or whoever it might be. Spurs in game week 27, for example. So Bruno Fernandes, I think, has to be in there um there is a case to maybe sell in the week after because they got man city but he's a player you're probably going to just want to hold long term until the end of the season so like i said a brave person a braver person than me might go without bruno might go without salah um, and again when we tinker we'll look at what we could do with the money by selling them but for now they're definitely key players so most of these are obvious kane bruno fernandez salah but i think calvert lewin son uh, and definitely a triple up on uh, on man city is the way to go so this is the draft that i came up with right usual caveat supply you might not be able to afford this team you might even be able to afford a better team than this you'll have different selling values and buying values for different players like so for example i've had banff for quite a while if you don't you're having to pay more i haven't owned calvert lewin uh, now since uh, whenever i sold him uh, a few weeks ago so again you might have got him for a little bit of a cheaper price etc etc right now this isn't a bench boost team for a start there's no two playing goalkeepers that's something you would have to think about uh we've got stroic uh, who i've definitely pronounced incorrectly so i apologize to any leeds fans out there uh, at 3.9 who feels like a bit of a bargain and he is in there for two reasons one squad value obviously having a 3.9 million player in there lets you spend money elsewhere but also he's in there for game week 29 the only worry is will he keep his place but he is playing quite well at the moment and he's also quite a bit of a threat from set pieces as well so he's an intriguing one again if you had more money you would just go up to dallas but he is like now a million more um than stroke so it's, it's a little bit of a worry again if you've got money to burn i would definitely have diaz instead of stones but i think the triple up on man city has to be there the other option is double attack but the question is who do you drop right so if you're putting in de bruyne or sterling Okay, it'd be great to just swap Rafinha out, but that's a lot of money. Realistically, you have to drop one of Salah, Fernandez, Son, and I'm not against it, but Man City defense is just so good right now um, that I don't re wouldn't really want to go without him because I think if you try and look for another defender that's almost as good for a similar price, it's difficult. I think Luca Dean is probably the one that I would go for. Um, so I think this way around is probably the easiest way of doing it, but. Again, I've said this for the last few weeks, it hasn't necessarily worked out yet, but double attack is the differential, right? Everybody has double defense. So if you wanted to go Gundogan and Sterling, Gundogan and De Bruyne, whatever it might be. And also, you've got the benefit of waiting for their Champions League game. So I wouldn't put too much emphasis on who starts and then who's rested because ultimately that's just going to change again. So if, for example, um, hypothetically, Foden didn't start, in the Champions League, then you'd be like, right, he's definitely going to start the next game. Well, that's great, but then they've got another game of the double, and then they've got another double game week. Is he going to start all four? Probably not, right? So I wouldn't necessarily let that um, affect your picks in terms of double attack, but you would get to see kind of what's Kevin De Bruyne's fitness like because he's only played like a few minutes um, as a sub and then he played around 60 minutes in the last game, I think it was, against Arsenal. So he might be an option if he can prove his fitness in the Champions League. But Gundogan just looks like just looks like such great value. Uh, and there is a case to be made to not go for the value, right? At the end of the day, if you're putting one of your picks for Man City, the best team in the league, with two double game weeks in a row, perhaps you forget the value and you just go for De Bruyne and you do drop one of Salah or Fernandez and just make that big call. I think if he plays both games, there's absolutely a great chance that De Bruyne matches or could outscore Salah and Fernandez just due to the fact they play Chelsea. Man City's double game week's not easy, Right? I think it's West Ham and Wolves, which isn't like the easiest of easy fixtures, but it's definitely better than having to play Chelsea, in my opinion. So you could make that call. Kane and Son in there. Like I said, the, the main key players that I spoke about, Triple City, Son, Kane, Calvert-Lewin, Salah, Fernandez, all in there. And then you've got Rafinha and Bamford um, preparing for the game week 29 
blank. And obviously, you only have to play one of them with this team. So you would play Stones, Cancelo, and Regulon, all with double game weeks in game week 26. Then you play 3-4-3 or 3-5-2. You'd only have to play one of Rafinha or Bamford. Again, if you've got more money to spend, you could upgrade Rafinha to Harvey Barnes, for example, um, and just play him. And then before game week 29, swap Barnes to Rafinha or, or whatever. Get Rafinha in however you want. But there's options to do that. He could be Lookman if you're struggling for cash. You've got Dan Byrne in there who's covering for Solly March right now in Brighton's team. And they, they play in game week 29. And again, he's only 4.2 million. Potentially, you're stretching the budget a little bit by having such a cheap defence. Uh, but maybe that's a risk that I would be willing to take because right now Burn is starting constantly and I just don't see why that would change. So I quite like this draft. Martinez, I bought cheap, right? So I can afford to have him in. Um, if I was paying 5.3 million, I would possibly think about choosing someone else because that is quite a lot of money. I know he's got a double this week, but um, the fixtures after kind of game week, I think it's 33 a pretty poor for Villa, right? And then without Grealish, we don't know how long he's going to be out for. Again, he could be someone that's in this team. Watkins could be in this team. There's lots and lots of options, right? Let's talk about them some more when we do some tinkering at the same time. Right, so this is the team. We're going to talk about it a little bit more, right? Not in massive detail, but a little bit more and also look at t uh, players we could change around, right? And where we could save money, make improvements, whatever it might be. Because I know there's certain players that are missing from this that a lot of people will be considering, like Harvey Barnes, for example. I know a lot of people want to put him in. Leicester defender, Luca Dean, right? There's lots and lots of options we could change. I've already spoken about that a bit. Regulon, by the way, um, there is a slight risk with him in terms of he's not necessarily guaranteed to start every single week, right? Ben Davies is there. He could start instead some games. But when Regulon's fit, he does start more often than not right and he does have a good double game week he has a very good fixture in game week 27 which is crystal palace and he plays in game week 29 so potentially he's an ideal um option but davies is there right which is a bit of a problem like if davies was injured or something like that regular will be straight in i wouldn't even um give it a second thought so he's potentially someone that could go right so with this with this uh, I've got nothing in the bank. So I don't have any leeway whatsoever, right? There's a few different ways you could get more money. Rafinha down to like a Smith Rowe for 4.3. My only worry about him is um, he didn't start the last game. It's not to say that he's just going to not start forever now, right? Because he did play quite well, um, as well as can be against Man City. But he's only 4.3 million. Right, so that saves you 1.1. So that gives you the option to go to um, Luca Dean, for example. We could put him in. You could have gone for Stones to Diaz, whatever it might be, right? That gives you the option because you don't have to play him this week. Okay, you can just bench him and you just play Bamford instead in the 3 4 3. And again, um, Arsenal have a fixture in game week 29. It's not necessarily easy, but they do have a fixture. And if Smith Rowe played, then you'd already be kind of covered for that right but let's say you don't want to do that i think a lot of people will want rafinha or they might want harvey barnes right you might want to go big um big in midfield so let's just put him in a second so this is a lot of money now 2.1 million to find the easiest option really is just to go down to brewster right so to get rid um to get rid of Bamford, right? Because Leeds only have a single game week. But again, they do play in 29. So that is worth considering. If you're free hitting in 29, don't worry about it, okay? You can just get your Leeds players back. Obviously, there's an argument to be made that Leeds players are just good anyway, right? Uh, so if I click off this, uh, Villa at home obviously is not bad. West Ham away, Chelsea at home. They're not necessarily fixtures you need to be tripled up on. It's just the fact they play this week. But to be honest, the fixtures aren't great afterwards. I could see myself starting to drop Leeds players here or just benching them. Um, so the the absolute need to have three Leeds players is, is just dictated by game week 29. Right? If, they, if they weren't playing in 29 or that wasn't a blank game week, I, I think we could see people wildcarding in 26 with about any Leeds players. So if you're set on free hitting in 29... Uh, I would possibly think about leaving a few of them out. This is obviously a little bit risky because Brewster is not even getting minutes at the moment. I think if we look at his um, last few games, he's only actually got one point in the last four. Uh, so they've got so many strikers there. He obviously hasn't hit the ground running. A bit of a weird purchase, to be honest. We won't get into that here. But um, yeah, weird transfer to then not play that often. And obviously, he's never even scored a goal in the Premier League, right? So it was a lot of money. Liverpool got a good deal there. But you could do this, right? You keep the rest of the team. Again, if you needed a bit more money, you swap Luca Dean to Regulon or even someone cheaper if you wanted to, like Luke Shaw has got a double game week who's a good price as well. But that's another option. Um, obviously, if you don't want to do this, then you start having to think about dropping Salah or Fernandez. 
I, I'm going to be honest, I know most people don't want to drop Fernandez, right? Even though I think Salah's a great option uh, and has scored, what is it, four in the last five. And look at these fixtures, by the way. Fulham, Wolves, Arsenal, okay, is difficult. Villa, Leeds, Newcastle. These are great fixtures. Southampton, West Brom, Burnley, Palace. I'm not saying if you wildcard him out, you can never get him back for those fixtures. But he's also a very easy hold. But I know, deep down, most people, if they're going to make a choice between Salah or Fernandez, they're going to drop. Uh, they're going to drop Salah, right? So let's let's make that um, choice here. So let's say we drop Salah. We could not Man United. We could go for the double up of Man City, right? So De Bruyne and Gundogan. It's going to be difficult to do De Bruyne and Sterling and have Fernandez and have Kane and have Son. But De Bruyne and Gundogan is decent. You get rid of Stones. You could just go for Diaz now at this point, just to be absolutely sure that you get. Um, a playing defender every week from Man City and then you've got 5.6 to spend and again you could drop some money elsewhere uh, potentially put Luca Dean back to Regulon and then go for a Leicester defender because I think Leicester's fixtures personally I think Leicester's fixtures kind of swing themselves more to going for their defenders instead of their attackers like Harvey Barnes I think Arsenal, Burnley, Brighton and Sheffield United Sheffield United is probably the best fixture the rest of them, I don't think they're going to be necessarily scoring a huge amount of goals. But it is what it is. I know a lot of people like Harvey Barnes right now, so I've stuck him in. The problem with Leicester defenders is Castagna and Pereira are both 5.7 or 5.9. What's their kind of in fitness status really more than injury um, status? Are they going to be able to keep playing? If they do, you'd have to find a little bit more money. I can't even afford them. You could go for Evans at 5.5 or Soyuncu um, at 5.3. But obviously, the goal threat or the attacking threat in general is kind of diminished a little bit with them. Um, I would probably go for Pereira just because he's been playing right wing. So he's either going to play further up the field or he's going to play fullback. I think when he's fit, it's very it's not very often they're going to rest him. But you'd have to find another point three in my team. So I'd probably do Regulon back down to... Um, probably back down to... Sorry, Luca Dean back down to Regulon. Or you could really risk it and double up on, on Leicester defence. Which would be a massive differential. Like, if you look at the fixtures... Um, I, I, I look at these four fixtures. Arsenal, Burnley, Brighton, Sheffield United. And I think they definitely come away with two clean sheets. Definitely. Could they get three? Possibly. Then they blank, and then they play Man City, which is not great. But then it's West Ham. I, I can't show you the rest on the screen, but it's West Ham, West Brom, Palace, Southampton, Newcastle. The fixtures are really good right down to game week 35. If you wanted to take a bit of a risk on wildcard, you go double Leicester defence instead of double Man City, and you go for two Man City attackers instead with Fernandez, Son, and Kane. That could be massive, right? That could be massive. And then you've got your three transfers for game week 27, 28, and 29. Obviously, with this team, you've only got one Everton. So if they did double in 28, you might want to think about getting Luca Dean in. But if not, you could swap Barnes to Rafinha in game week 29 and that would give you um, just about enough money I think to do Brewster um, to Bamford or if not you try and roll a transfer and just take a minus four so there's an easy way to get to game week 29 and still have enough kind of transfers and players so in this team you've got Martinez, um, Byrne, Struick potentially playing so that's three players you've got Son, you've got Kane and that's it so you've got five you got you got three transfers before that to get more if you want to. Or you just don't leave yourself in this position, right? You just get a few more to start off with. So there's lots of different ways you can go. I'll leave the tinker in there because obviously it's, uh, you know, you've got the final decision on your team. And again, Stroic, you could put him up a bit in price. I think Burn looks pretty nailed though for 4.2. So I think he would possibly be uh, in my wildcard team. And I've not even spoken about Chelsea defenders. Rudiger for 4.6 is another really good option. But I think if you can fit a lesser defender in, Luca Dean and or Luca Dean, maybe Regulon if you want to take that slight risk. I think there's a lot of good options in defence if you wanted to go for the Man City double up and attack instead. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully it's been helpful. If it has, please do give it a like and hit subscribe if you're new around here as well. Uh, and obviously don't forget the watch along that I'm doing tonight at 5.50pm. That's when the stream will go live. Obviously 6pm kickoff for the game. We'll go right through to the end. See how it goes. It's the first time I've done one. Uh, hopefully it'll be enjoyable and hopefully there's some goals i just really hope it's not a nil nil because that would be an absolute nightmare and lastly if you want to check me out on patreon link in the description below everyone that signs up gets up on the legends wall thank you to all the legends that have already signed up much appreciated as always uh, and yeah if you want to get your name up on the wall if you want to get slack access whatsapp access all that good stuff there's a link in the description below 
I'll leave it there and I will see you again tonight, like I said, at 5.50 uh, this evening. I'm looking forward to it. Please do give the video a like, hit subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll catch you soon.